how to trade on the stock market using CIBC Investors Edge. So you're probably looking to invest in a stock market because you want to grow your, you want your money to grow. You don't want to leave it in a savings account in a, at a bank where it's only generating not even 1% per year. And you want to be in control of the growth of your money. You, you want to make your, your own decisions, your own choices, what to buy, when to buy, when to sell, as opposed to having a portfolio manager invest your money for you, maybe perform well the first two years. And then when they have a bad year, they just blame it on the market. It's not their fault. You knew what you were getting yourself into when you decided to invest in mutual funds. So stock market is great if you really want to grow your money and you want to be in control of it. So you get to decide what which companies to buy, what when to buy them and when to sell them. So personally, that's why I love trading on the stock market. So in this video, I'll just show you how to use Investor's Edge. Personally, I use Investor's Edge and Questrade. I already have a video on Questrade. I have many videos on Questrade actually, and I'll, I'll link one of them in the description below this video. But what's great about Investor's Edge is, or CIBC's Investor's Edge is, they charge only $6.95 per trade, and that's all the time. There's no minimum amount of trades per year in order to get the 695 when i first started with investors edge it used to be i think you needed to trade for i think 40 trades per year i remember it was like you had to spend yeah in order i remember when i first started with investors edge in order to get the 695 uh, cost you needed to you needed to make more than 50 trades per year and you need to pay and you needed to pay for that up front i think it was you had to pay like 350 dollars up front in order to get 50 trades per year at 6.95. So if we look at the pricing of Investors Edge, so they've been rated twice, number one in fees and commissions 20, in 2015 and 2017. So you pay a flat fee of only 6.95 per online equity trade, no minimum account balance, no minimum number of trades. So if you open a non-registered account, so just a regular investment account, so not a TFSA, not an RESP or not an RRSP, there's no annual fee if your balance is greater than $10,000. But if your balance is lower than $10,000, there's a $100 fee, annual fee. But that's for non-registered account. But most people, when they trade on the stock market, they'll open a TFSA, which is, as you can see here, there's no annual fee for TFSA, RESPs, and RRSPs. Although RRSPs, only if your balance is above $25,000. For RRSPs, there is no annual fee if your balance is over $25,000. So yeah, so trades are $6.95 per trade, stocks, sorry, are $6.95 per trade, and options are $6.95 per contract and $125. And options are $6.95 per trade plus $125 per contract. While Quest Trade was $10 per trade plus $1 a contract. And CIBC's Investors Edge, they have special pricing for active traders. If you make more than 150 trades per quarter, every trade will cost you $4.95. And your options will be $4.95 plus $1.25 per contract. But as a beginner, or for most people, it'll be probably in this range, the $6.95. So going, getting back to the TFSA, why most people will open a trading account in a TFSA, because your gains are tax-free. And since you're most likely going to make the highest gains in while trading on the stock market so you want your gains to be tax free so this is where this is where the TFSA comes in see i see i see some people sometimes they they'll open a savings account in a TFSA so that's completely useless because there's no point of there's no advantage of having 1% per year of, of your money tax free you want wherever you can get the highest gains you want that to be tax free that's that's where the advantage is and that's how you should use the TFSA. So if you're making 10% or more on your savings, on your money, you want that to be tax free. The beauty of the TFSA in my opinion is if you start young and you start off let's say with $5,000 and every year you're able to put something in your TFSA and you're making gains every year and then these gains are co compounded, of course. In 25 years, let's say your account reaches $500,000 or even a million dollars, depending on how much you put and what and what kind of gains you're making. So let's say, just for example pur purposes, your account reaches a million dollars in that TFSA, any gain you make from that million dollars will be tax-free. Or even if you decide to withdraw that $1 million, it'll be tax-free. 
But let's say you have that $1 million and you're making 10% per year and you decide to withdraw that 10%, which is $100,000. Well, that $100,000 that you're withdrawing will be tax-free. So a TFSA is a great, great way to make good income tax-free in the future, of course. But you have to start somewhere. And if you're consistent every year, your account will grow and you can actually make 100K a year tax-free. And I have a video explaining that and I'll link it in the description below this video. So these are the fees for Investor's Edge. So if you want to open an account, simply just click on open an account and everything is done online. Open an account online and then you choose what kind of account you want to open. Hopefully you choose TFSA and you just fill out the information and then you'll have to sign some papers. Now, when I first signed up for Investor's Edge, I had to go to the bank and drop off the paper so that they can fax it to Investor's Edge. Now, I'm not sure if we still have to do that now if you could just send it online but worst case you'll probably just have to go to a bank a branch and have them fax the paperwork to investors edge usually takes it'll take five business days for your account to be up and running so, so what's great about investors edge is because it's directly linked to a cibc account transferring money is fast it's usually the same day so i recommend starting with at least one thousand dollars before you start trading on the stock market and i also recommend to avoid using a margin account margin account is where you can borrow money that you can trade with so that the profits you make are higher and then once you sell the stock you pay back the money that you borrowed but that of course is very risky and i'll most likely make a video explaining why you should avoid a margin account so yeah so to start off you should start off with at least a thousand dollars and yeah and i'll show you now how to use investors edge so this is the home page of investors edge the interface on the left side you have side menu and here you could obviously obviously see your total market value in canadian and what's great right now with investors edge is that you can separate your tfsa in canadian and usd so it shows you your cash balance it shows you the market value of your securities so the stocks that you hold and your total value, which will be your cash plus your plus your stocks. Now, of course, if you're going to trade U.S. stocks, I recommend having a U.S. dollar bank account and converting Canadian to, to U.S. outside CIBC. Because if you convert directly with CIBC, you're not going to get the best rates and that will affect your your gains. So whenever you feel like the U.S. dollar is relatively low compared to the canadian dollar then you should buy some us dollars outside of your trading account and then put those us dollars in your us bank account and then transfer that money from your us bank account to your us trading account to avoid the high conversion rates of cibc okay so on the on the side menu you have account holdings so if we click on account holdings it shows you what you have in every account so here you can see my account so let's say i switch to tfsa now i can look at combined holdings or i can separate it by canadian and us so let's separate it by canadian and then I, i'll click on get holdings so i have last business day i have intraday changes and i have portfolio book value so last business day of course is last business day intraday changes is what happened during the day the current day and portfolio book value is the price that you it shows you the price that, that you paid for the stock so if we look at intraday changes you could it shows you that compared to yesterday this stock dropped 1.8 percent this one dropped 1.58 percent and this one went up 2.56 percent <clears throat> and it gives you your market value and it gives you the, the market change and it gives you the change in dollars if we look at portfolio book value so here it, it, it tells me my book value so i paid 800, 849 dollars for this and closing value is 1000 1039 and bridge my book value is 4400 but my closing value is 4449 so i'm profitable by about 27 dollars and hudson hudson bay i paid a thousand i put in a thousand five dollars but the market value is 865 so i'm losing 139 dollars so we can do the same thing with our us tfsa so same thing book value versus closing value you have all the information, you have the company's name, and you have the totals. Now, transaction history is great because it gives you all the details, what went in, what went out. So let's look at TFSA Canadian, get transactions, and you could choose the period, let's say last 13 months. 
if I wanted to see, and I could also choose what kind of transaction I want to see, if I want to see the trades, if I want to see the dividends, if I want to see the fees, contributions, and I can also choose the symbols that I want to look up. So let's say I want to see all the dividends that I've received from Enbridge in the, in the past 13 months. So here would show me all the dividends that I received from holding Enbridge shares in my TFSA Canadian. The documents of course are certain statements relating to your account. So usually gives the every month you get a statement shows the details of course of your holdings and the last statement of the year usually tells you your investment return how much you've made in the last calendar year you've got your trade confirmations and of course you've got tax documents now if you want to place an order on a stock using investors edge so let's say you open your account and the one you transferred in a thousand dollars and it's already in your trading account so the way i like to do it is i like to go on quotes and research i'll look up the stock that i want to buy so let's say i want to buy enbridge so enb and then i make sure that the country's canada add symbol so then i get some information about the stock over here last trade was 46 dollars and 10 cents the day's high and low was 45.93 to 47.50 52 52 week high and low is from 37 to 53 so then I could, so if I want, if I'm ready to place a trade, I can go ahead and click on trade here, or I can go into the, click on the symbol just to get more information on the stock. So I got a snapshot here, tells me how much, I, I can see how much dividend this stock pays. So the yield is 5.82% per year. Use, I can go to charts, period that I want. I can go to reports, look up analyst reports, to see what they have to say about this stock. So Enbridge is a buy recommendation. 12 month target price is 39 USD. And 39 USD is about $51 Canadian. You can see the financials. So income statement, revenue, expenses, net income. You can look at options and you can look at technical analysis. So if you're ready to trade, you'll always have the trade button near the stock that you're watching. So you can just click on trade. And then the stock order entry window appears automatically. So it shows you which account you're buying from. And then the action you want to take, if you want to buy, then you buy. Symbols automatically there. The market that it's from is is automatically chosen so Canadian and here you choose the quantity that you want to buy here you put the price that you want to buy it at and here you mention how long you want your your order to be to stay and here you choose from which account you want to buy you want to pay for the stock so if you if it's a Canadian stock then you want to use your Canadian TFSA if it's a US stock you want to use your US TFSA but obviously you want to make sure you have money in those accounts so for example right now my cash balance in canadian is 145 and in my us account it's only 257 dollars so let's say i had a thousand dollars and i wanted to buy some enbridge so first of all i'll take, I'll take my thousand one thousand dollars i'll remove the seven dollars of of fees so i'm left with 993 dollars with that first i have first of all i have to decide at what price i want to buy enbridge Let's say I wanted to buy it at, right now it's trading at 46 about. So let's say I wanted to buy it at 45. So I'm not comfortable buying it at 46. I'm, I'm more comfortable, comfortable buying at 45. And if you're wondering how do I decide when to buy or at what price to buy, I have many videos where I explain how I decide which price to buy, at what price to buy a stock. I'll, I'll link it at the uh, in the description at the bottom of the video. So let's say I decide to buy at 45. So I'll place an order so that whenever the stock drops to 45, my order will get executed automatically so I don't have to be sitting in front of the computer and watching the stock. I'll just place an order once. If it reaches 45, great. 
my order will get executed automatically. If it doesn't reach 45, then my order will not get executed and it'll just expire depending on the order expiry I give it. So I have $993. I'll divide that by 45 because I want to buy it at $45. So that means I could only buy 22 shares. You can't buy fractions, of course. You can only buy whole numbers. So I can only buy 22 shares. So the quantity of shares that I would want to buy is 22. And order price, because I want to buy it at a particular price, I'm going to choose limit. So let's say it's 45. And the order expiry, I could put it for the day or I could put it for one month. The max is one month. And here I would choose which account the money comes from to pay for the stock. Now, if I didn't care what price to buy it at i just i looked at the market price and i see that it's it's well priced and i want to buy it right now then i could just click on market and it's going to buy the stock automatically at whatever price it's trading at and the stop order price that's more advanced it's more for short-term trading so for day traders or even swing traders so i'm not going to talk about that right now for for beginners for beginners you won't need this unless you want to day trade so yeah so i'll go back to limit put the price that i want i'll click next and here i'll have a confirmation page put my password submit order once i click on submit order so basically basically i can just go to account holdings and let's say enbridge here so i already have enbridge I, i've got 95 shares of enbridge so let's say I want to sell it, which I do, but I'm going to sell it at a particular price. So automatically, so let me just do that again. So I'll go to account holdings and then click on this button here, action, and then choose sell. It gives me automatically populate sell and ridge. And it tells me how many shares I hold. So 95, I want to sell all 95 shares, but I want to sell it at $50. And the order is good through August 6th and automatically gives me, because it's a Canadian holding, it's going to be paid out in my Canadian TFSA. Then I click on next. So it tells me the good through date or on your order cannot be a weekend. So let's go August 4th again. So let's go August 3rd. So that's how you place an order. Now, I like using the stock center here for from Investor's Edge. They have a good stock uh, screener. What I like to search for is usually I'll pick a pick a country. I'll look for market caps that are greater, let's say, than 999. So great, greater than a billion. Because you see here, it's, it's already in millions. So I want to mark. I want market caps that are greater than 999 million. And I want a dividend of at least 3% per year. And then it gives me 91 matches on the Canadian Stock Exchange. Click on View Matches. And here it gives me the stocks that meet the criteria that I chose. And I can sort, let's say sort, I sort by market cap, highest market cap. So Royal Bank is the biggest stock on the Canadian Stock Exchange. Followed by TD, Bank of Nova Scotia, which is a great buy, by the way, right now. Enbridge, number four, Bank of Montreal. So basically the way, this is like a short version of the way I trade is, I'll look at blue chip stocks. So, so blue chip stocks are companies that are not going to disappear. Big name companies that are not going anywhere. Like Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble, or Royal Bank. So companies that you know they're not going to disappear or it's very, very unlikely that they go bankrupt. So I, I like to watch these stocks and then just wait for them to drop for whatever reason that is. I don't care what the reason is. I just want it to drop. And I'll look on the based on the charts. So if it, if it reached a new 52 week low, then I'll be very interested. And if that price, and if I notice that for the past two years it's been above that price, then that gives me confidence that it, it will surpass that price eventually. So if you want more details on the way I trade, you can watch my other videos where I explain how, how I personally choose my stocks and at what price, which is what works for me, does not mean that it, 
it will work for you but I am very transparent I show my portfolio I show my trades so you see all my profits all my losses so yeah so I use this stock center under quotes and research to do is to use the stock screener and help me look for the stocks that I'm that I want to buy and you can look at performance you can look at fundamentals and you can look at estimates so let's look at dividend yield which one pays the highest yield so Kanoe EIT pays 10% per year this is a good stock it's been very it's very stable though does not move much so if we look at let's look on, on the US side which stock is the biggest I think it's Apple or Amazon here let's look market cap above 999 view 20, 2600 matches so biggest market cap on the US stock exchange is Apple 904 billion so it's about to reach a trillion in market cap Amazon is right behind that 822 billion Google Microsoft Facebook so all these companies of course are companies that you can easily buy into without being worried of losing your money but of course it's important to buy at the right time so that you can profit from buying low and selling high Walmart Walmart is a good buy right now here let's look at the chart quickly for Walmart so you could see that for the past year See, it's at a 52-week low. Actually, the lowest in the past year was about 75. Right now, it's trading at 84. But it's been above 84 for probably 8 months, 9 months. And then if we look at 2 years, yeah, so it's only been above 84 for about 8 months. But the highest it reached was about 100 and... 106 actually let's look at the snapshot here 50 yeah 52 week range is 109.98 if we look at reports so it's a buy recommendation and the 12 month target price is 109 so at 84 it seems to be a good i personally bought it at 86 so it's a walmart is a good buy right now because everyone knows walmart isn't going anywhere so it's a safe stock to buy and just wait until the stock to go back up and while you're waiting you're collecting dividends and then you could sell when the stock is higher and make a profit between the purchase price and the selling price so this was a quick overview or tutorial on how to use CIBC investors edge so if you have if you have any questions leave them in the comments below I try to answer all the comments uh, you can also watch my other videos I talk more in depth about which stocks to buy and why I buy them and at which price. So good luck with your investing and uh, thanks for watching.